Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today I have a hem hack for you. I'm going to show you how to hem multi-layered horsehair braid hems evenly. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche? This channel is for you. Now when we talk about hemming things evenly, we all may be picturing something different. So I'm going to first start with a sketch before we get to the videos to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to look at the skirt of a gown and you've got your shell layer, your outer layer fabric, and then you've got your lining. All the vertical seams are aligned and the skirt is attached at the waist and um, the lining and outer layer of the skirt is attached at the bottom. Now if you were to cut that lining layer a little short, you would get a bunching or a bubble on the outer layer of the gown. Um, contrary to that, if you were to cut the outer layer a little short, you would get some bunching or bubbling underneath or perhaps even some of the lining falling out the underside of the dress. As always, my video is going to include a couple of little extra hints. This is one that will be coming up later. All right, let's get started on our project. Let's first orient ourselves um, with how this is stacked and exactly what is stacked together. Underneath, we have this stiff tool or crinoline fabric. Um, different seamsters call this different things. Um, but we have that, we have a narrow horsehair braid, and then on the outside, we just have a light layer. It's a, it's a woven uh, synthetic, it's a polyester. Sometimes you also see this configuration uh, with like an organza. And basically they're just wanting to use this tool type fabric to give that outer layer of fabric just a little bit more body. Um, the problem is, is that if you cut first and you cut these apart, um, you can very easily, uh, because of the difference in the way the fabrics stretch and behave, you can very easily cut one a little shorter or a little longer than the other. So this is the horsehair braid that we're going to use to replace it. It's a half inch white and there I'm focusing in for you. So you can see I buy this by the spool. And this is that springy braid that's going to give the edge of the skirt some body and it's not going to allow um, the skirt to bend in a, in a quick sharp crease. It's going to have kind of rolling edges in the bends of the fabric. I also have another bonus hint for you. I had an email. A question from Mary. She was asking, when I put in bus pads, do I put them between the layers or next to the skin? I want you to think on that for a minute. How do you do it and why? And I'm going to talk about that also later in the video. So lots of goodies today. All right, so I'm showing you how I put this horsehair braid. Um, this is laying on top of the outer layer of that polyester fabric, okay? So not the inner layer. This is laying on top. And I first need to prepare my transition. This is the side seam at the bottom of the skirt is what I'm looking at here. That's what I'm working on. We're gonna open this up so that I can taper from the old to the new. So I'm breaking these stitches to peel away that outer layer of fabric to separate it from the horsehair braid. And then I'm gonna snip the braid so that we can start our new braid. Now, as I was thinking about uh, preparing this video and I was thinking of some funny stories um, and how we always try to do our best, but you're not gonna be able to please everybody. So I had a funny little story uh, to tell you uh, just to illustrate to you how you can't please everyone. <laughs> and there's a lot of downtime between instruction today, so I'm just going to tell you the story while I'm working. Right now I'm gesturing how I'm going to place the horsehair braid on the top outer part of the fabric, and then I'm rolling it just to make sure that I'm orienting things correctly and I'm folding my horsehair braid, the end of it, I'm folding it correctly so that when I flip it to get it on the inside, um, that it's laying correctly. So it's always good to go ahead and um, practice those kind of things before you sew them down. 
Now this pen is marking the final length that we want the hem to be and I'm visually um, kind of reserving that length in my mind. Oh, look at that. Rats. <laughs> okay, so I had a little snare on my needle. Let's, uh, let's change the needle. Uh, you're going to want to use a finer needle or a ballpoint, certainly a fresh needle, or you're going to get this. The needle is going to strike one of those fibers that's in the horsehair braid. Um, if you can't pull it straight, just go ahead and snip that one line that's pulled. Um, and you can do this as long as it's not, you know, going to be visible or going to be where it's going to be catching something. This is actually between, um, this layer is actually between, uh, there's some outer tool layers on the outermost part of the dress. On the underside of the dress, there's more um, crinoline and then the lining against the leg. Um, so this layer, we could have gotten by with snipping, but since I had just started, I went ahead and started my horsehair braid over. You definitely would not want to try to repair the braid and keep sewing it if it was on an outer layer that was going to show or if it was on an inner layer that was going to grab or pull at something or scratch the bride's leg. So here I am just sewing this along and I am visually um, sewing this the length that it needs to be. So um, that means the right side of the horsehair braid is going to be sewn to the fabric a little to the right of where I want the finished hem length to be. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it because you're going to see it in a few minutes when I flip this. You'll get what I'm saying. I want to sew this just a shade on the side of long because when we roll that horsehair braid, it's going to shorten the edge just a little bit. Now, why this is a hem hack is because we didn't cut first. We're sewing it with the layers together. And the reason why that allows us to sew so much more neatly is because there to the far right is your original hem edge and that's keeping all your layers stabilized together and as long as you keep everything to the right of your presser foot perfectly flat and it's stabilized together then you know your new seam is also going to be flat so there's my pen that's marking the length and you're going to see swinging the horsehair braid just a little to the right of that a little closer to the edge to make up for the fold and I'm just going to keep on sewing and you saw how I tapered this in from the original seam and then when I get near the side seam I'm going to taper back out to the original seam. Now back to my story about not being able to please everyone. One time I had a mother of the bride, well the, the bride contacted me. I don't let anybody else initiate the contact for picking up the dress. It's up to the bride because someone could be very bad and try to sabotage her wedding and I'm not going to be a part of that but the bride contacted me and said I need you to meet my mother and let her get the dress from you um, I don't want you to alter my dress and so I thought well that's strange I hope I didn't do anything wrong um, and the bride did not want to talk about it so um, the mother got in contact with me and she did not even want to meet at my shop uh, she, she and I met in a parking garage. The mother was very, very nice and she was very apologetic. So apparently her daughter was having problems. Okay. Here I am, uh, opening this other side up to taper. Okay. So back to my story. So the bride was having problems and, um, the mother said it was not me that, one of my employees who was actually a very good employee and I literally this was the only complaint I ever had about her I had never once had a complaint about her um, but this bride had had a premonition about one of my employees and so she wanted her dress back and she didn't want to work with us so there you go that will show you that you cannot please everyone especially if someone um, is having problems like that. So I just thought that was a little quirky and I said, okay, that's fine, you know, and gave her the dress back, no problem. But we do what we can and things that we can't help, you know, we just move on. <laughs>
All right, so here I'm going to taper back in. I left a little tail on the horsehair braid because we're going to fold that back so that the horsehair braid ends in a fold. You can also tab the end of the horsehair braid. I'm sure you guys have seen that. You can cap it with a little bit of a fine fabric or something. All right, so I'm letting you see the taper there. And now here comes the cut. You don't have to be afraid because everything is laying perfectly flat. And I'm going to cut just barely to the right of the horsehair braid. And we are gonna leave the edge of this raw, and that's okay because when we flip that horsehair braid, the horsehair braid is gonna contain the raw edge between um, the skirt and the horsehair braid, and it's not going to be able to unravel or cause any types of problems. All right, so let's get back to cutting. Okay, so after I cut this, I'm going to show you how I sew it down. Then the next part of the video is going to be about the email that I received. I received a question about how do I personally place the bust pads in a gown? Do I place them close to the bride's skin, um, you know, up against the lining of the gown of the bodice? Or do I place the bus pads between the layers because it looks more neat? You can't see them. Um, and when this person asked this question, I thought, oh, this is such a good question. And I emailed her back and I said, can I please share this with our BST besties? And she said, absolutely. The reason why I wanted to share it is because it's something that I do naturally now, very consistently. Um, I don't even think about it anymore, but there is a lot of reasoning behind why I place the bust pads where I place them. So I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Now I have finished cutting and I've rolled the horsehair braid up and you're going to hold that kind of taut because you want that roll as small as possible. If your roll gets too large or loose, uh, you run the risk of getting bubbles in the edge and also you run the risk of your dress getting too short. Now these rolls actually take up a lot more length of fabric than you would think. Um, so you just really need to use caution with that. So I'm using my invisible zipper foot. As you guys know, that's my favorite zipper foot to you. My favorite foot to use is my left and right invisible zipper. So this is the left invisible zipper foot and it's putting all the pressure on the left side as I sew and the needle can get very, very close to that edge on the right. Um, and so all the pressure is going on the left side. I don't have a multi-purpose foot that's going to just be kind of hovering on the right side, sewing over nothing, and then, you know, putting all the pressure on the left. Um, all that's going to do is block my visibility a little bit. So that's why I chose the left invisible zipper foot for this. I do have a video that talks about my sewing machine, um, the Juki here that I use, uh, 5550N. I love this machine. Um, and there's a whole video about it. For those of you who are not familiar with the commercial machines, you swap out the feet. You don't usually use a multi-purpose foot very often. Now here's what this roll, roll looks like after it's sewn. It's very, very neat. And I can assure you all of these hem layers are exactly the correct length. And you can also see there's no bubbling that's occurring at all. Another reason why I consider this a hem hack is you got to see how I did this entire project without actually measuring. Um, so I visually measured um, and I visually did the taper. That's not something you want to do if a, you're just not that type of person and you want to measure and you want to mark either with pins or something that you wash out or whatever, whatever your preference is. I don't know. But, um, if, if that just doesn't work for you, don't try to do this. And of course, risk running a gown. Um, also this is one of the in-between layers. And so there's a little bit less risk as well. So here's the finished look of it and how flat and neat it's laying. Obviously, you would want to press it after this. 
Okay, so back to the question about the bus pads. Um, this is kind of the key for how I'm going to do the diagram. The magenta is going to represent the shell or the outer layer of the fabric. The purpley blue color is going to represent the lining layer with the boning structure. Okay, so this is a side view of it. And let's picture putting a push up pad on the inside of the gown. Uh, directly facing the skin of the bride, okay? So not between the layers. You can see that does not disturb the pattern of the boning. Now, this is what happens when you put it between the layers. You're gonna have that push-up pad pushing on the boning toward the bride, and the boning is not going to get to be the thing that sustains the curve for the outer layer of the dress. Um, you're also, the boning is going to be misshapen by that pad. Now let's look at it at a different angle that's gonna show you um, another reason that's very important um, why I order the bust pad the way I do. Okay, so simple side view, keeping the same color coding uh, for the parts of the dress. Now this is just showing you the gap that can form because of how the boning runs linear. It's vertical. Um, in the gowns, even if they sew the cup in, there's usually a vertical stick running down the princess seams of the gown, and you can see how the bust can settle in there, in that gap. So if you put the push-up pad directly against the skin, you can get a lift, and the pad is supported by the boning, and therefore supports the bride. Okay, now if you were to move the pad between the layers, yes, it does look better when you look at the gown on the inside, but all it's going to do is push the boning against the bride and it's gonna form more of a squish rather than a lift. So I have found that putting the bust pad directly against the skin is more supportive and also more flattering. Now let's interact a little bit in the comments down below. How do you place the bus pads and why? Also, what do you do when your needle strikes the horsehair braid? Do you have any special fixes for that? Do you have any ideas for hem hacks that you would like to share? Remember to keep it nice. This is a community. We're all friends here, okay? Um, so leave those comments down below. Also, make sure you give me the thumbs up. No matter how often you visit, when you watch my videos, the thumbs up helps me so, so much. And I'm so thankful for you doing that. Also hit subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community.